Youths have nighttime sighting near North Webster year, 2003 season, fall month, October date, 11 state, Indiana County, Kosciuszko County location details. This is a private residence on a small lake about one plus miles north of town. Just to our east by a mile is a 4,000 acre state wildlife fish and game area. Nearest town, North Webster, Indiana nearest road, just west of State Road 13 observed, okay. Not, just a story. This happened to us recently here, at home, one night. Friday night, October 10, 2003 Saturday morning, approx. 1 a.m. My son and two of his friends were coming home late one night, just about 1 a.m. on a Saturday morning after recent homecoming activities. Since their plans had gotten changed, I wasn't expecting them home. They were supposed to stay somewhere else. When they pulled into the drive yard, I was already in bed halfway sleeping, when I awoke to the sound of someone pounding on the front door and yelling excitedly. Then I heard my name and dad coming from them. So, I slowly pulled myself from bed and made my way to the front room where I heard the sound of one of the bedroom windows sliding open. My son came falling through and ran to the front door just about the same time I reached it so we opened it and let his other two friends in. They came in very quickly. In a jumbled mess of excitement, they started telling me about it being down there and coming up here, and all sorts of things I was too groggy to understand. Saturday after work, I finally sat down with two of them to hear it all again and get the whole story, in order, and without all the confusion there had been the night before. Here's how they explained it. After pulling into the yard up near the trailer, they walked in the dark up to the porch and started to knock. Friday night, the 10th of October was right around a full moon, and the sky was absolutely clear that night. As they walked up on the porch to knock, one of the three looked back over his shoulder, cause he heard something and noticed a stump down in the yard, about 150 feet away, near the boats at the edge of the water. The other two looked then to see what he was talking about, when the stump got up and just stood there. Even in the moonlight, they could see it was not a deer, not an anything, except the form of a person because it stood there directly facing them and they could see it easily. So as they started to knock more excitedly, it began to walk away quickly to the east on the shoreline, but then abruptly turned around and began to move much quicker right back across the yard where it had been and toward the marshy area and light woods and tall grass immediately south of the porch and trailer. When my son saw this he came running around the trailer and let himself in through the window. Now the other two could hear the sound of, this guy, running heavily into the tall grass, sticks, branches and all the stuff that was down in the woods between the trailer and the lake, but then heard it starting to move closer in up the hill. That's when the hard pounding and yelling to let them in really started. We let the other two in, locked the door. I went back to bed, while they stayed up half the night rehashing what had taken place and how it freaked them out. Four hours later, I was up, ready for work and out the door around 5.25 am. I had my son get up and briefly talk me through what they had seen earlier. Even at 5.30 am as I was leaving, the moon had made it mostly west in the early morning sky and was still so bright I could easily make out every tree, patch of grass, boat at the shoreline. Every little thing we're used to seeing out here. Back at 1 am when this happened, it was even much more illuminated with the moon directly overhead, especially with the light bouncing off the water as well. So, maybe it was, just some guy out squatting and then standing in 5 inches of lake water at 1 a.m. in the middle of the country? Well, when I'm 6 foot and about 200 pounds, and they see some guy, who's way taller than me and a lot larger, and built a lot larger, way taller, way larger, and grunting slightly as he ran. We only have one neighbor, and knowing them, they don't run around in a yard of standing lake water at 1 in the morning, or noon for that matter. He's also not approximately in the range of 8 feet tall, and built large at that height. Then my son reminds me when I asked what it looked like, he says, you know, like that thing 4x and I saw about a year ago up between the sheds one night. You see, somewhere about a year ago, he and a friend were out running around with flashlights and a paintball gun after dark, when they see what they thought was a stray dog laying in some tall grass between two of our outdoor sheds. They decide to shine the light on it and then shoot a couple paintballs at it when it starts to get up revealing that it isn't a dog, just some large hairy. Bigger than a man, but we don't know what it was, so we just ran, kind of thing. They never saw a face, 
but did see a large eye that reflected orangish red back at them when the flashlight hit it as it seemed to turn its head slightly toward them. When they did see the eye reflecting back and realized that was a head, they observed there was no muzzle of any sort. That's when they realized it wasn't a dog. They didn't stick around for it to get up all the way off the ground. They could see that as it was getting up, it was large, hairy, more like a person and not a dog. So he really felt like this October. Sighting was the same thing they had seen some six or more months ago. So, that's basically it. After much grilling on my part, I do believe them. I didn't see it myself. I wish I had the presence of mind that morning to grab a gun and stand on the porch and see if something did make its way up the hill in the little woods. Why I didn't, I'm not sure. Too late to speculate. Only thing to do now is plan for the next time. Also noticed. Read complete story other witnesses. 3. My son and two friends. They were coming home from school homecoming game and being over at a friend's house after it. Other stories. Noted in story time and conditions. A little after 1. M Saturday morning October 11. Clear out with full moon directly overhead environment. Wet lake yard, between house trailer and lake. Mostly open with tall grass and marshy area. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Stan Courtney. I spoke with one of the witnesses by phone. The other youths are away at college. The witness stated that the animal was at least seven and one half feet tall and very bulky. They were able to see very well because of the moonlight. Motorist has daylight sighting of two animals east of Wabi Lake. Year, 2004, SEASON, Spring Month, April Date, 2 State, Indiana County, Kosciuszko County Location Details, 300 feet east of the intersection of County Roads 1100 North and 300 East. This is east of Wabi Lake in Milford, in nearest town, Milford nearest road, County Roads 1100N and 300E. Observed. On Friday, April 2, 2004, at about 5 p.m., my wife was returning by herself from a trip to drop off our daughter at a friend Backwood's house west of Wabi Lake in Milford, Indiana. She was traveling east on County Road 1100 North. She approached the intersection with County Road 300 East, which leads into Oswego, and came to a stop at the stop sign. She looked left, right and briefly ahead. Before beginning her turn she noticed movement directly ahead on road 1100 and she saw crossing the road from left to right, heading south, approximately 250 feet ahead, two large, black, hair-covered figures, taller than an average man walking on two legs at a hurried pace. Her first reaction was to say out loud, what the heck was that? The way they were walking very close together and hurrying suggested that they were aware they were exposed in the open and wanted to get back to cover quickly. By the time she saw them they were in the middle of the road but she saw them take 5 to 7 steps over several seconds. They were stooped forward and looking down and swinging their long arms quickly. After this they entered the woods. She said they were close enough to have scared her if they had looked her way. Also. They were close enough to see they were not just men in black clothing as there were no divisions where shirt, pants and a hat would be. Only solid black from head to toe. My wife, who is a college-educated professional, then made her turn onto 300E thinking she would then have something interesting to tell me immediately upon arriving home. When she reached home however, something else unusual happened. Instead of telling me, she apparently blocked out or repressed the experience from her memory, as if in denial. I have been a Bigfoot enthusiast for many years and have read of this happening before to people seeing a Bigfoot. It is like your mind refuses to believe what the eyes are telling it because it is so new, different and without a reference point. About two days later we were talking and I said something that brought it all back to her suddenly. She then told me the whole experience in detail, showing signs of alarm and even imitating the way they walked. Of course I wasn't backquote T about to believe her without asking questions. After all I was the biology major in college, I'm the outdoorsman and I'm the Bigfoot enthusiast. I'm the one who should have seen them. I asked all the typical questions that the BFRO interviewers asked and she answered them all correctly, even adding additional detail. 
I asked if they might possibly be some young high school guys in all black gothic clothes, as some of them like to wear. The answer was, they were absolutely not men in black clothes. The thought also occurred to me that she was messing with me, playing a joke to mislead me, so I asked. This was the last straw. She got hurt and angry with me for not trusting her after 27 years of marriage, and I got the silent treatment for two days and had to do a lot of apologizing. I'll have to just agree with her, based on the evidence, she saw two Bigfoots crossing the road. Wish I had seen them. Hopefully, by learning as much as I can about this creature I will be able to remain calm enough to stay and observe it, if I ever see one, instead of freak out and run as most do. Some may say, your wife learned all this from listening to you go on and on about what you read on the internet. Believe me, when she tells her story you can tell it was a very real experience for her. Whether anyone believes her or not she knows what she saw, and will say so. Also noticed, nothing other witnesses, none other stories, have heard possible vocalizations, screams, when camping southeastern Indiana time and conditions. Clear environment, low, wet-looking area on north side and wooded on south side of road follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Stan Courtney. I spoke at length with the witness by phone. She described the animals as being somewhat taller than six feet tall. They walked kind of humped over and in a hurry.